Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse, and in today's segment I wanted to discuss with you sarin, also commonly known as sarin gas. Um, there is discussion right now in the media about whether or not Syria will use uh, sarin gas on its people for purposes of containing the rebellion, revolution, however you want to name it. Um, but for us in the United States, I think it's a good thing to take note of events when they come up like this um, so that we can learn from them. Chemical warfare is, is actually pretty low on my list of anticipated scenarios. I don't find it particularly likely, but in this case I think it's a good thing to um, have a knowledge about it and to have at least a, a cursory knowledge of how to deal with it. So let's talk about sarin and what is it. Uh, most commonly when people talk about sarin, they call it sarin gas. Sarin uh, in its original form is a manufactured liquid and it is reconstituted with a couple of of, of different compounds to make it more easily dispersed and uh, one of the ways that it's typically done is it's vaporized into the air um, but really it's not a gas at that point it's just a bunch of really really tiny liquid particles catch is, is that those liquid particles are so tiny that people can breathe them um, but also they can touch the skin the symptoms of people um, getting poisoned by sarin are actually pretty extensive, but I want to try and condense it down here for you. Um, difficulty breathing, tightness in the chest, nausea, drowsiness, vomiting, diarrhea. By the way, the, what I'm referring to is the Terrorism and Other Public Health Emergencies, a reference guide. It's available on the Patriot Nurses bookshelf. It is a wonderful resource, uh, but in addition to going through this book, I've had to do <laughs> some consultation with a chemical weapons specialist from the Army for this, for this video because uh, I do not deal with sarin gas and sarin exposure every day. Um, so you're basically dealing with the body's nerves being paralyzed. Everything starts to go really, really wonky and, and you don't breathe and that's how people end up dying usually. Um, there are some drugs that are available as antidotes. The catch is that these drugs have to be administered within minutes and it takes a lot of them. It's not just, oh, okay, one stop shop and then you're done. It's No, they have to be um, given after the initial dose. So let's talk about ways that we can um, deal with it practically that most people can do. Well one is obviously gas masks. The catch is that those gas masks have to be well fitted and you have to have, especially if you get the ones that have the canisters, the canisters have to be um, attached properly and um, most of the time when you buy the gas masks they don't come with the canisters so make sure you do that. Um, also make sure that um, when you are, are putting the gas masks on that they fit because if there's a leak then the gas is going to get in there. So that's obviously one. Um, when we are looking at decontamination from sarin exposure. Water and washing heavily with water and soap, especially Dawn, because it's good at, at degre degreasing things. It, it helps to break the stuff down more easily. Um, showering from the top down, not from the bottom up. Also cutting the clothes off and not lifting them over your head, because what happens when you lift the clothes over your head, that the particles in the clothing get aerosolized and you can breathe them. So ideally what you would do is if you had been exposed to it, you would cut the clothes from the top down and then you would decontaminate that way. So um, this is just a, a pretty brief segment actually because we don't see sarin all the time. <laughs> we don't see uh, chemical weapons and, and nerve agent exposure, but I did want to put a little bit of uh, information out there for you guys. wanted to let you guys know about the upcoming Patriot Nurse classes. The next one actually will be in Knoxville in two days, so I've decided to be <laughs> uh, nice and leave up late registration uh, for another day, so if you have dilly-dallied to the last minute, you can still register. Um, following that one, January 20th, will be Philadelphia class, the Philadelphia class, and that will be in the Valley Forge area, so it's going to be a wonderful class. I'm really looking forward to it. Then in February, I've got two classes, February 10th in Sellersburg, Indiana, and then the 24th, February 24th is Fort Lauderdale. Then in March, we've got the Texas classes. So all of these are available at the website, www.thepatriotnurse.com. Hope it was helpful for you guys today. And for now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see you all later.